Why, hello there. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny gonna dive in today's daily creative challenge, and I'm happy you're here. Matt, Ted, Sam, Melanie, awesome. Sean's in the house. Awesome, good to have you here. Uh, yes, so this is day eight, just so you know. Uh, so this is gonna be a good day. I'm super excited about this one because anybody can take this and run with it. So this will be good. Yeah, guys, so good to see ya. Good to see you out there, virtually that is. Um, and where we're gonna travel to today, hey, why not? Is we're gonna head over to uh, my home state of Colorado. So. Um, there's some other images in this file, but basically we are gonna we're gonna hit the slopes is what we're gonna do. We had snow on Monday, uh, Tuesday. We had snow on Tuesday, and uh, so it's it feels a little bit like winter. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to have some fun with blurs and sharpening uh, in Photoshop. So this is going to be a good time. So let me know how you're doing. Feel free to say hello so I can just give you a warm welcome and a virtual hug, right? That is the plan. Uh, all right, Kelsey, yeah, you're dealing with it as well, right? Good old snow that we have here, isn't it wild? Muriel, hello. Awesome, good to have you, good to see you here again. Uh, just pasting this link, uh, if you're elsewhere, by the way, uh, in chat, yeah. So in Colorado, we, have, we had record temperatures, probably over 100 this weekend. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there we go. Let's do it. Travel passport. Oh yeah. Check it out, blur and sharpening. We're gonna add depth and focus to a, a photograph using blurs, blur filters and sharpness, mainly the blur gallery. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, Andreas, good to have you here. You can get started, click that get started file, access it, there it is. Let's open it up in Photoshop. Let's get this party started. Cause we can see we have this lovely image that's just begging for some motion. Okay, yeah, no vowels. We don't have time for vowels. There ain't no time for vowels. We got this one as well. Begging for motion, begging to be higher and smaller, like they're jumping over the bridge, right? We also have the city. And then we have this lovely eagle, which I think is amazing. Okay, so here are all of our various files or layers that I'm just turning on and off. You get to pick the one that you want to use. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with this city because it's probably gonna be the um, easiest sort of example to get started with, okay? And good to have you here, Susan. Uh, it is okay, you're never late when you can always rewind and one, let's wait for it. Looks like I have a little, little dip in stream quality. That's silly. Okay, so uh, we wanna create some, some depth of field, all right? So what you'll do is you'll select this layer and you'll go up to filters and you'll go into like, maybe you'll go into blur and there's plenty of these in here that do a lot of amazing things, but nothing that we really need. What probably people used for a decade was uh, Gaussian blur, which I'll still use. But there's lots of these lens blur, motion blur. If you go to these, these are all gonna be maybe a little bit more limited. We can never get rid of anything in Photoshop because people will complain. So we just leave it in there and we make new versions or have a legacy. So you'll see legacy and new and some things like that. So motion blur, for instance, this is cool. It gives me motion blur, but really all I can do is control the angle, right? Doesn't really give me what I want. I'll get into motion blur later, but that just gives you an idea of what happens there. So you'll go into the blur gallery, which is where we're gonna spend most of our time. But before we do that, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna convert this to a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object. Cause we're basically gonna have this smart filter on it and it's gonna protect it so we can change it later on, okay? And yeah, it is kind of like we're do we're gonna try to do another yeah a toy camera trick exactly. There you go, Sig. You got it. We're reading from the same script right here. <laughs> but uh, from here, filter blur gallery. You might not even know what's what. Field blur, iris blur. Well, it's not eyes. Tilt shift. They're not really tilting. You might not even know what these is fine because if you click on any one of these, it's gonna launch into the blur gallery. And that's what I'm in now. And sure enough, those same options are right over here, okay? So we'll click down uh, the first three of these. We can see the field blur 
does pretty much what the Gaussian blur does, okay? The nice thing about field blur, as with all of these blurs, is you have control over, oh, by the <laughs> well, yeah, at least it, it doesn't, this is technically Tokyo, so I've already broken with the theme. <laughs> but, um, you know, we could add this blur, right, which the Gaussian blur will just blur it. But here, we're actually, we could deal with the uh, effects of this blur. So we can have a light bokeh, we can add more light to it. Uh, add more color and give it more light range, okay? And that goes for all the blurs, right? So this is super fun. We can come in here, increase this light bokeh, just so you can see it do its thing, see how it gets a little bit more electric there, right? It gets a little bit more electric and we can also expand the light range and you can see obviously what it's doing. I'm, I'm exaggerating this just so you can kind of catch a vision for what's happening. So I like using these effects even when it's a simple blur, right? You can just give it a little bit more pop. And especially if you get into Boca Color, right? You're going to see those colors start to pop at, around the edges. So see what's happening? It's like you added a, um, an, a, a blur and then turned that layer into like overlay or did something else, right? On blend mode. Okay. But that's what you could actually do generally with these Blurs. As you mess with this, by the way, you'll jack with things. I encourage you to jack with all this stuff. You could always reset it back to the way it was right up here. Reset blur gallery. Okay. So uh, I encourage you to, it should have actually, why did it reset blur gallery? Well, anyways, no, no, no thanks for showing us nothing, Paul. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Anyways. Let's just roll it back to what it was. Let's remove all pins is what I did right up here, okay? But I don't wanna do fill blur. I wanna get into like iris blur, right? Is gonna give us that eye. Wait for it. Here's that iris blur giving me that center point, right? That, um, let's take that down, uh, that we could obviously control. So they all work in a very similar fashion. I'm gonna go to, right into tilt shift because most of you know that it's coming, tilt shift is gonna give me uh, not only the amount of blur right here in the center, sure, I get it, like crank it up, make it exaggerated, and we can see that it's going from zero to, you know, 60 pixels, 80, 90 pixels. That's the amount of blur that's happening, and we can determine the fall off. So we can stretch that out, and we could hold down the option key. If you hold down the option key, we can uh, equally uh, adjust the fall off on either side. Obviously, this is a little drastic. I could take that down like that. And you really want to get this dialed in. Again, you can come in here, hold down the shift key to, I do that all the time. I always grab this little dot and this is to rotate it. You want to go to the line and grab that line. Again, holding down the option key will make a perfect mirror and we can tighten that up like so if we want to. Holding down the option key, we can adjust the fall off. And now we have that sort of small town feel, like it's a tiny town or a toy as was mentioned, right? So click OK. You know, there's one example, easy enough. The scratched by Ray-Ban blur. Hey, I have that filter on my sunglasses. <laughs> oh, man. Do you go through phases of you're like, I'm going to buy this expensive thing so I'll never lose it. And then you'll like scratch it and you're like, ah, what am I doing? So Boca, by the way, I see that question up there. Gosh, how do I explain Boca? Mm, it's sort of the, the, this is Boca. I might actually have some Boca filters right in here. Let's just do this really fast. B-O-K-E-H. Here's Boca. This is a good example of Boca. It's all these light bursts that you have in photos. So if that's what you search for, uh, that's what you'll get. These, these um, light fragments as if they're coming through a lens or something. So uh, that's what that is. Okay, let's move on. That looks like tiny town. We have a little tiny town. We could add Godzilla to it. I want you to have fun with this, by the way. Uh, so right in here, like, yeah, you could add this eagle to it. We can add this eagle in the sky if we want to. Okay, so let's do, let's do this. Let's see how many of these I can get done. You know, repetition is like the mother of mastery. I just made that up, but it's probably a quote I read. <laughs> let's go in here. This is what I do. First thing I need to do is I would want to extract this eagle from the background, okay? So I would command J, right, right over here, Command J just to duplicate or jump that layer because I'm going to have an eagle 
a background layer, and then I'll have my eagle layer. So right in here from eagle layer, I'd select it. I go to my properties panel. You want an easy button? Hey, what do you want to do? Oh, remove the background? Yeah, that's what I want to do, right? Click right there, no hands mode, boom. It removes the background as you can see right here. Cool? I love this eagle, it's awesome, right? So right over here, we'll zoom in on this. I can hold down the command and click on that uh, layer just to get that selection because basically I want to remove um, this, uh, this eagle. And I could do the same thing with like, if I wanted to select it using the um, object select tool, I have it set to lasso at the top, select it that way. The big thing is we need to grab all of this content, right? And you might go out here and like, oh, I need to grab more of it. Grab more of those pixels. In fact, I usually go up to select, modify, expand by like 10 pixels, maybe 15 pixels, right? Expand that selection to get every little edge. Otherwise, you're gonna get a little edge right in there. So that's all I'm doing right there. It's pretty easy. From there, what do we do? We fill it. Content aware, fill. I'll just go to fill. Content aware style, that drop down right there, and then just click OK. That's what I usually do, shift delete. That brings up that dialog. Uh, obviously, I missed it right here. No big deal, content aware that part. The eagle's already gonna cover up this, so I'm not really sweating this too much. Okay, so there he is, he's extracted, right? Because we might actually put him over the city, yeah! But let's get him some blur, let's give him some blur effects, okay? Um, Frank's in the house. Hi, Frank, how you doing, buddy? Are we gonna do Inktober? Man, I just don't think I'm gonna have time, to be honest with you. I would love to, though. Right click. One thing I'm gonna do is convert this to a smart object, right? To protect all those lovely pixels that I just extracted. Convert to smart object, and uh, now we have our eagle. Let's go in, and you guys know what I'm gonna do next. I agree, Donovan, content aware always blows my mind as well. Hello, Valentino out there. Hi from Italy, good to see you. Afroja, awesome. Welcome. So let's go to filter. Let's go down to blur gallery, right? That's what we want to do. We've already kind of touched on these first three. We have path blur now. Hmm, interesting. So much better. If I go into path blur, I'm going to get this lovely path because that's exactly what I want to add to this eagle. As I move this around, I can control the path direction. Okay, so he's going to be kind of, uh, I want it to be blurring up and to the left. Okay, so right in here we have, as I take a look at some of these controls, the middle point is like a Bezier point that we can start to curve, right? We'll get into that. And then we have these insides and outsides. But if we look off to the side, we can see right over here. Oh, here's the amount of speed that we can add. Let's make it go really fast, Zip. right? And it gets super blurry, right? We can see what happens there. But that's what we can add. We can add maybe a point that goes like this. There's one swoosh. Let's add another line right up here. And here's another swoosh. So we can have a couple of paths right in here that generates motion going two different directions, out however many you want, okay? Uh, oh, I need to buy a Nikon lens, lens wear, Nikon lens wear, because they have a one year warranty into it. Yes, shout out to Ni uh, Nikon for doing that, that's so cool. So this looks pretty basic because hey, guess what? Right over here, it's called basic blur, even though it is pretty advanced, right? Um, you don't necessarily need that centered blur on, uh, but we can get dive into more of this, right? Because we can control the speed, okay? And we can control the taper. So the taper is how much it's gonna taper off. I'll just scrub this clear over too, as you see it to 100, you could see it's gonna be sharper near the object and then more blurry the further you get away from it. Okay, so let's take this down. This is how it is initially and then it's supposed to taper out. That's the taper at 100%. So let's just pull this in, by the way. Right, you will start to see the difference. What I encourage you to actually pick, by the way, let's actually take this taper, let's give it a lot of motion. Go right over here to this drop down, and we're gonna change this to rear sync flash, okay? 
Yeah, we need to adjust the shutter speed. We're actually jacking with the shutter speed big time. We're jacking with the flash as well. So we want this rear sync flash. So if you think of motion, it goes, you know, bam, 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 like it's something is moving. We want the flash to happen to the rear or the end of the curtain, whatever you want to call it, the end of that motion. So um, everything behind it is going to be blurry. So let's just change this to rear sync flash. And this is what we get. We get that rear sync flash. We can see uh, that this closer to the item, the object. Later on in time, technically, it'll be sharper. Can you use path blur on a car wheel? Good question. You know what I would actually use right in there is the lovely spin blur. So use that on a car wheel, okay? And this is what you would use. Here's your perfect car wheel that you would spin any amount you want and all that fun stuff. And in this case, I'll turn it off. I'll go back to my path blur. And isn't that lovely how I can sort of come in and add another one, add this path blur I could have if I had a car, I would put this on the wheels, of course, and then add the path blur as the motion of the whole vehicle. And you can actually layer them on, obviously, uh, in the blur gallery. So this is fun. This is looking pretty good. We can kind of increase the speed. Uh, but check this out. I'm going to get into this a little bit more. Let's, oh, sorry. Turn that one off and Ooh, right down here. You ready for this? Love this. Check this out. We can add that blurriness. We can increase the speed if we want to. It gets awfully blurry. But we can have the number of strobe flashes. So not only does it happen at the end, but we can have it happen a couple times. So let's turn this on, and I hope you're able to see this. There we go. The strobe strength. Look at this. It's like, bah, 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 bah. I'm taking this one uh, long exposure photo right and we can see it the flash goes off like six times and it's really strong and you get this awesome motion in there right isn't that kind of cool right we could have a number of strobe flashes we could make that strobe strength really strong wait for it i'm going to exaggerate this as soon as my mouse lets go of it right there we go extreme we'll just do an extreme example like that we'll click okay and uh, start to work with this. It's kind, it kind of hurts your eyes a little bit, right? Well, we can always go in there for that particular smart filter, right, where that's being applied, select that mask, hit B for brush, make sure black's in the foreground, and sure enough, just kind of come in and paint right in here and make some parts of this, like this edge sharper, maybe the edge of this wing, maybe the top right here, Right, and make certain parts sharper if we want to. And all I'm doing is removing that mask and we get that lovely motion, right? So that's the whole idea. It's like, now it's awesome, he's flying, right? Maybe he's flying over the city, I don't know. If you do this, by the way, you're gonna have to add like a cooling filter. So I would go right down here, I would add a photo filter and I would change this to like a cooling filter like so. I would make it a clipping mask and clip it just to that eagle. In fact, we can go with the color and we could actually sample. Oh, why can't we sample? Oh, I know why. Exactly why. Let's cancel. Let's click there. Let's go up here. Let's click here. Let's click here. Let's click here. You know, sample that exact color, right? And increase that. So I'm making it kind of match that background, okay? By adding this cooling filter. Happens to be a photo filter adjustment layer just to get it to match. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of fun to work with. You could do this with anything. So I have that set up, that looks good. You have a couple other snowboarders right in here. Let's turn them on, right? Uh, that one and this one. Let's do this really fast, just because I like giving myself a, a challenge. I'm like, okay, now that we know how to do it, this is kind of like our final recap, you know? Um, let's duplicate it, let's just add a layer mask, it's fine. Boom, boom. Select, modify, expand by 15, why not? Content aware, bye bye. Here is our guy. He is a smart object, he's protected. He's gonna have a lovely path blur because we had so much fun with that a second ago and jumping right in here, taking these where we want them to go. Big swooshes, whoosh, big speeds. 
right? Throw another line in there, making this as active as possible. And we seem to really love the trails on this. So we'll change this back to the rear sync flash. We'll increase the strobe strength. We'll increase the strobe flashes. Let's increase them. Let's crank it up, crank it up. Look at that. Just for fun, we're just pushing the limits of what this can do. Like that. Something like that, does that work? Right, we'd have less, we have more, like look at that. Like, look at that. And the cool thing is, is actually bending that object, right? Making those different versions. So I'll do something like fun like that. Uh, the bokeh is really cool. Uh, the bokeh is awesome to deal with, by the way. Kind of controlling the brightness of it all. Um, let's just jump that layer. Let's just have a separate layer on top or something. I don't know, I'm just kind of playing with this. Uh, let's take this initial snowboarder layer. This is the snowboarder with the blur and let's just change this to like uh, linear dodge. So see what I just did? Added that as that linear dodge giving him some motion or her some motion in this case. Uh, yeah, gnarly, you're exactly right. Re Reverb Mike, love ya, love having you here, man, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, so with the background we could do, just to recap even the beginning, I would make this a smart object. I'd go into the filter, since you mentioned bokeh, field blur, right? And we can play with that background as well, kind of crank that up and go into, by the way, here's one last thing this is really important that I need to talk about. Let's increase the bokeh color. Now that I think about it, let's click okay. It's one thing that I missed, right? But that's, that's getting there, right? That's getting to some place where we kind of like it, right? Let's do that. Oops, you know, something like that. I would, I would play with this a lot more, but you kind of you kind of get the idea. I would do lots of blending. But let's go back to this version because you're gonna run into this case where we have this eagle. If I would have kept this eagle on its original background and I'm trying to add this blur, the problem is, and we will go into this filter, is the fact that the graininess, you miss the graininess when you start to add a blur. So right in here, this is actually really smooth. It might be really hard to tell, but this is really smooth. And then in the background, the background has this grain. It's like, I need to simulate this grain on the blur. The blur takes away the grain and we can add that grain back in. In fact, you'll notice it more if I take down the strobe flash is, and there we go. So, so this is what I'm talking about. Let's increase this some more. Let's actually do change this to just basic blur, just so you can see. See, there we go. Now you could really tell, it's like, oh, this doesn't match up and this, you're not fooling anyone, right? So right in here, that's when we go into the noise and we add that noise amount that we wanna work with to make it match up. So kind of zoom in on that, start to add a little bit of graininess, see, and match up that graininess with this newly added graininess. Um, and by the way, you can deal with the, the size and the roughness and all that fun stuff. In fact, if I go into grain, this is where you get to control the amount of the grain, the size and the roughness. So you could even get more fine control when you get into grain. Oh, where are you scrolling to, Paul? Where is it going? Zoom out, right? Anyway, I'll click OK. There it is. Cool. A lot of fun things you could do. Yeah, you got to have that eagle eye. Well played, Carol. Well played. Oh, yes. Do you have to let, make the layer a smart object? No, you don't have to. Um, in fact, you could just select something, and this is kind of what I'll end with. I could come in here and just uh, do a uh, select subject. It's going to select this guy. Now... Remember, this is on one layer. I'm just gonna show you this because you're gonna now know why it's here. We'll go into path blur, right? And as we add these, this blur, it's only blurring our selection, but we could have the selection bleed, right? So it will bleed, it should bleed out into the, there we go, into the background, right? So that's what, you could do it on one selection. I don't know why you'd ever really do that. <laughs> I like making it a smart object so you have that control later on. Because let's face it, we're, I'm indecisive. We're all indecisive to a degree. 
Um, but once you have that done, whatever you create, just have fun, export that out, and uh, we'll take a look at it in good old doo -doo -doo -doo, right down here, Discord. Right on, you get the idea. We are doing blur and sharpening. You're gonna put it in the current challenge. Hats off to everybody doing these great quotes and uh, just having some fun with that text. So that's, I love the, the travel quotes I've been getting and reading about in here. So anyways, once you have that done, eagle blur. There we go, why not? Uh, oh, no, 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 Mister. this is for Mr. Godzilla, by the way. A smart object is basically a PSD that a PSD inside of a PSD. You have this little symbol. So anytime you make something a smart object, it's going to protect it. So you want to have this little icon saying, hey, you know what? I've never really blurred that eagle because if we double click on it, oh, thank you so much. It's technically in a separate file and all these pixels are beautiful. And chances are, oh, I didn't select it right. Hey, guess what? Let's kind of clean up that selection. And of course, uh, we can, um, you know, uh, fix what we need to, you know, and then go back out. So smart objects, uh, that'll change your life if you don't know about it. But I want to thank you for hanging out with me. That's it for me. Uh, stay tuned because we got fun stuff hanging ha happening all day today. Thanks for watching, everybody.